Welcome to the Grace Girls and Company podcast, hosted by none other than yours truly, Julie Tussie. This is a podcast for all the Grace Girls Jesus sends to listen in and join us. This podcast is filled with the word, encouragement, and sassy verb to help you be you and do you because he created you. All of our guests are going to inspire and fire you up and they're going to encourage you in a way you probably haven't been encouraged in a long time. So join us now as we go into the Grace Girls and Company Podcast. Thank you, all you Grace Girls, for joining me right here on the Grace Girls and Company Podcast. I'm Julie Tessie, and I'm so glad to be here with you. Woo! How are you doing? I am doing great. I am so glad. I am so glad that it's summer. And the COVID-19 coronavirus is dying. That's what I'm saying, because I'm actually taping it a little sooner. (laughs) But I believe that things are going to get better, and I'm super, super excited about it. Now, listen, we talked on the last podcast about how you can join the Subscribe-a-thon and the Share-a-thon for our um, YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Tussie Television and subscribe. You can find that in the notes. You can also just go to YouTube and look for Tussie Television and subscribe. We need to get up to a thousand subscribers and here's why. Gary and I have launched Tussie Television. We have done already in the past, we did 200 episodes of another program, Christian program that was that ended in about 2006, I think. And we've done tons and tons of television and radio and live television, live radio and all of that kind of stuff. And now we're podcasting and we're doing all of these things. But we're ready to go on television again. We're going to have two or three different shows. We're going to bring guests in. But in order for us to build our channel and do live stream 24-7, we need a 1,000 subscribers. So please go over there. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it with your friends and family. and Get them to subscribe. And, and I don't even think you, unless you set notifications, you're not going to get notifications. So it's not going to bother you or blow your phone up. But I would so appreciate if you would do that and help us out. The other thing was we launched a new website called TussieOnline.com. And you can go there to support the ministry here and come, and become partners, become a voice impact partner because the nonprofit is called The Voice Incorporated. And you can become a VIP, my baby. You can become a VIP. So I'm super excited about, about all of that. I can talk today. Yes, I can. <laughs> so... As we're building this um, station, we, we've got about 300 and some episodes, or uh, I guess they're called videos, on the YouTube channel, right? And as we're building it now and getting ready to go, Gary and I have come through some of the things that we've already done and were produced for The Voice of the Redeemed airing, and they are so cool. So we've, we're putting on some archived information on the YouTube channel, so you can actually go there and see the video. But I had this teaching that I did with a friend of mine, her name is Reverend Sharon Webb, and it was called You Are Called. Now... I am a girl who was so backwards about speaking or singing in front of people that it was terrible, terrifying stage fright. I am not kidding you guys. So the Lord used this message that you are called for the gifts and callings of God are for the gifts and the calling singular. The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. I believe that's Romans eleven twenty nine. Um, don't quote me on that. Just search it in your Bible app. But anyway, I was like a teenager. I was saved when I was 12, started really serving Jesus and got called to the ministry at 17, found a church to go to, you know, all of that. And the Lord had to convince me, you guys, that I was called because it was him or bust. The only way I ever did anything for Jesus and not just run off the stage in terror was that I was so convinced that he wanted me to do this. <laughs> he wanted me to do it. So it's been a major, major theme in my life. And 
I wanted to share these three one hour episodes. I'm probably going to cut them down. I think there's some things in them that I can, you know, trim so it's not too long for you. But I wanted to share these. You are called um, three episodes from the telecast. And so I'm going to put them in. Now, you guys, these are like 2005. They were recorded in 2005. And man, was I skinny and cute. What the heck? What the heck? <laughs> Don't you hate it when you look back at old pictures and you're like, you remember feeling so insecure and so not good about yourself. And then you look back and go, oh, my gosh, if I had that now, I'd be like the diva of the world with it. Maybe that's how we stay humble. I don't know. But the mean girl in my head was big back then, my sisters. And Jesus had to help me in a big way. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here in the program. And then I'm going to come back and talk with you after that. But don't forget to go to the new website, TussieOnline.com, and check it out. You can subscribe there. You can give there. You can um, find your Venmo app what you do with Venmo apps and cash apps and things like that. It's really, really cool. You can listen to music there. There should be videos uploaded there pretty soon. Just a lot of exciting things. There's probably some things about Gary and I that you do not know, and I'm going to give a lot of our information on this website as I build it. And then go to YouTube, search Tussie Television. It'll pull you straight to our channel and subscribe and help us out, okay? I hope you enjoy this. Here is the first program of You Are Called. Hi, I'm Julie Tussie, and this is the Voice of the Redeemed Telecast, and we're really excited to be here with you today. We have a wonderful program for you, and we're going to be talking about the call of God. So I want you to get your Bibles, get your popcorn, sit down and get ready, because God is going to move in your life today in a tremendous way. And we have a word from heaven. Amen. Amen. I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Reverend Sharon Webb. And she has a ministry called Alive Ministries. Now, I like that, Alive. Amen. You know, it's better to be alive yes. than dead. <laughs> Amen. Right. Yes, that stands for Abundant Living in Victory Every Day. Well, how come I didn't know that? I should have figured it's like A-L-I-V-E, Alive. Say that again. Abundant, abundant Living in Victory Every Day. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. And your ministry is about um, a, a lot of evangelistic type yes. things. You go out and preach yes. around this area, and mm-hmm. I know you're speaking. Different states. Yeah, I know you're mm-hmm. sneaking on up into Ohio yeah. quite a bit and here and there and been to Florida when the weather's nice down yeah. there. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're glad that you're joining us and we want to get into the Word today and talk to you about the call of God. Now the call of God is something that's really special to me because um, I have traveled all over the United States and ministered for the last <clears throat> years. <laughs> and uh, the thing that the Lord, the main thrust of what the Lord has had me do is to share about the call of God. And I think that was because, and hopefully we'll get into this a little later, that was because as I grew up, I had such a low self-image and self-esteem because of the things that I'd gone through. I found it very hard to believe that God, the God mm-hmm. Almighty, would want to use me. Right. And so because of that, the Lord took me to several scriptures in the Bible and really laid a base in my life. And then he gave me a song called You Are Called. And he gave that to me in prayer one day. And as I wrote that song, it was just so powerful. And I know that we'll, we'll make it part of this program because we have it on tape, so you'll be able to hear it. But after I wrote that song, God would do the strangest things like have preachers call me out in the middle of a service mm-hmm. I was visiting and sing this song. And then after I sang it, they'd get up and say, now God told me to tell you this is for you. Mm-hmm. And I knew that God had given me the song for me first. But then, then it was actually for the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So I want to get into the Word today and listen. You know me. I can talk a mile a minute, and if I get going and you've got something to say, just give me a little kick under the table oh, or whatever. Okay. But feel free to step on in, and we'll just let the, the Lord have his All way right. today because you're not watching by accident. I believe that God is a God of destiny, and yes. God has caused you to watch the TV right now. I mean, you are ordained by God to hear what is about to be said to you today. And God has a plan for your life, so you just need to sit back and relax and let the Lord minister to you. And while you're watching today, we have a telephone number and an address up, uh, and we have it on constantly. 
We want you to call us and let us know what the Lord's doing in your life. Let us know what we can do to help you. And, and let us know if this is ministering to you or if you need anything else, more information about the call of God or about the things we're doing here at The Voice of the Redeemed. And uh, we'd be glad to give you that information. So call that number on your screen and get ready because we're going to get into the Word. All right. Um, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1 through 5. And we're going to be reading from the, the King James Version. And I'm sure you said your computer pulled up all kinds of wonderful oh, versions. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, not virgins, <laughs> versions. And we'll be, we'll be reading from some of those. But Isaiah 49, verse 1 through 5 says, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me and said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. In verse 5, And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Through Israel, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Oh, I love that scripture. I, I, I want to bring out in there, in verse 1, it says that the Lord has called us from our mother's womb. And I know that there are other scriptures that say, He was there and He formed me and He knew my substance. I mean, if you're watching today and you don't know this or you know it and you've laid it down, you need to give a good listen to this because God knew you while He was forming you and creating you because He had a call for you to fulfill. Yes. Amen. Yes, there's, I, as in doing this study, I looked up um, the different places where the word call is used. And in a scripture that's real familiar to us all, Romans 11.29 says, For the gifts and calling of God mm -hmm. is without repentance. And this stood out to me for the first time. We it have, didn't say call, callings. It doesn't say callings. Mm -hmm. It says calling. We have gifts. And we think about all the gifts, the different gifts, and the, the, the nine spiritual gifts, and, and the things that God works in our life, and even the administration of those. So I think every time we've repeated this scripture, we've just automatically said gifts and callings. Yes. And I was reading this last night and studying it, and I thought, well, that doesn't have an S on the end of it. Uh -huh. And so I thought, what is the difference? What, what is this trying to say to mm. us? And one thing that, that I think is very important that we recognize is the importance of the specific call mm. that God places in the hearts and lives of his children yes. uh, to minister. Because it says, then he, even after he gives us those calls, then he places us as gifts yes. to the church. Yes. And but then we get to the word call and we find that that word call is could be pastor, teacher, apostle, prophet. Yes. Uh, but it, it can also be many other things. Mm -hmm. you, your call is, is the psalmist as well as giving forth the word of God and you give it beautifully through song. <laughs> Thank you. And very Jesus. anointedly. Um, but that that call that we all come into this world mm. with is that call to be everything we can be for God. Yes, yes. And He equips us exactly. to do that and to fulfill that. And so, you know, as we're, as we're, as we're talking, I hope people are encouraged to know mm. that call never leaves. Yes. God's call to us never leaves. He's always calling. He's always drawing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everything that he does, even the specific calls mm -hmm. that he puts on his li on our lives, are so that we can fulfill that mm. main call that yes. he gives to all of us, yes. and to bring others into that call. Exactly, exactly. That's really good, and I love that scripture. And that's that's the scripture that the song "You Are Called" is based on. Mm. And I had that on in my notes too because I really want to get into that. And I'm not sure in this first segment we'll be able to really dive into mm -hmm. all of it. But there are some so really much. wonderful <laughs> things in yeah. there. Um, in 49.3, it says that we are his servants in whom he will be glorified. 
That, to me, is so neat that God would create us and call us. I mean, he made us to be his glory, to, mm -hmm. to, be, to cause him to be glorified in the earth. It, that's so powerful. I love God. I love that about God. It's, God is not like people. You know no. what I'm saying? God is not like people. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> no, we love people, but sometimes they don't love us. <laughs> and then in, in verse 5 of that, it said, um, my, uh, my summation of it. <laughs> he formed us to be his servants, and we are glorious in his eyes, and God is our strength. I mean, in other words, not only does he make us, called he makes us called but he gives us those gifts to fulfill the call and right. bring him glory so it's kind of like you know taking your children in i'm trying to think of a good example giving them the idea that they want to be a cowboy but then making sure you go and buy them a little cowboy right. outfit and some cowboy boots and a little play you know belt and buckle and really make them good at what they do mm -hmm. and when they when they step into that cowboy thing i mean they're just going to shine and that's how god is with us he has placed a call on your life whether you're called to be behind a pulpit does not matter there's what was the scripture we looked up that that we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. And that means we are all called to reach out to those people who are not heaven bound yet, who do not know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And then God goes from that call and maybe a few or some of his entire body become what we call five-fold ministry, you know, and, and end up behind the pulpit. But not everybody can be behind the pulpit and the main purpose of the calling to be behind the pulpit is to equip right those mm -hmm. who are called to yes. the ministry of reconciliation and you know the thing about it miss sharon is the only way that we are ever going to reach people in our circle the only way we're ever going to do that is if we become what God has created us to be fully. If we say, yes. yes, God, I realize now me, for example, and I'll only use me because I don't know everything about you, but me, for example, my call is to help my husband with his church and my, with the church, and my main call is the gift of psalmist or being a psalmist. So because God wants me to be a psalmist, he has given me the gift and the talents to be a psalmist. I can carry a tune. <laughs> I can, you know, I can work on my voice, get it in shape, and actually sing a song. You know, God wouldn't call me to be a psalmist and then not equip me to do it. God would not want me to be a cowgirl and not give me my cowgirl boots. That's you know exactly what I mean? Right. God, mm -hmm. what God is calling you to do, God will equip you to do. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and the thing that we have to remember is it's just like what you were talking about just a few moments ago. Whenever God placed these callings in our life, a lot of people think, oh, well, I've not been called. I don't feel that I'm called to preach. I don't feel that I'm called to pastor. I don't feel that I'm called to evangelize or that I'm a prophet or, or an apostle or mm -hmm. teacher even. Not called to the So, uh, you know, I, I don't have a calling. Mm. And what everybody has to understand is everyone has a calling. Yes, You exactly. do have a calling. You, number one, you've been called of God out of darkness into light. Yes. And you say, well, that's no big deal. Well, on Judgment Day, look at me and tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. but, and then, um, and as you were talking about the fivefold ministry, uh, a lot of people think, well, it's, it's up to them to do it. Mm. But... In especially these latter days, you know, maybe in the earlier times when we look back how the Bible was being developed and most of it was told, you know, because they, they went into one particular place and they waited and everything was passed down through the, the vocal storytelling. Mm. And they had to depend on whoever was called, whomever God had called and set before them yes. to tell them right. and to interpret it to them. But now we have Bibles, we have commentaries, we have tell television, we have the computers and the online Bibles, and there's no excuse for us. So when the fivefold ministry, we should be losing power and status in the church yes. instead of gaining it because we're there to equip the people to go out. Exactly. And for fulfill the call. Because fulfill you know the call. that what I get out of Isaiah 49, 1 through 5, is that God formed us and placed a call on our lives. Mm -hmm. Number one and first and foremost is to be his servant. Yes. To be his yes. servant. 
And then after you are complete mm -hmm. in God, I mean, you don't have to be perfect, but after you realize, yes, I am the servant of the Lord and God wants to use me, it, the ministry of reconciliation is just simply sharing your testimony, mm -hmm. sharing your life, sharing the fact that Jesus Christ came into your life and made a difference. Amen? Right. And living it. Being. Yes. You know, I was, uh, when I was in a, in a went to a, a service, it was a ch church that I hadn't been used to, hadn't been going to, and I was just visiting, and uh, we were just sitting there, and all of a sudden, the Lord just spoke to me by His Spirit, and He said, my children are trying to be a bunch of doobies. Mm -hmm. I thought, this isn't God. I'm that's, not here for God. This, doobies. You know, no, <laughs> this, this can't be God. God doesn't say my church is trying to be a bunch of doobies. And I, was, so I thought, well, okay, what do you mean, Lord? And he said, they're trying to do so that they can be. Mm. But he says they don't understand mm -hmm. that until they learn to be, they'll never be able to do. That's because right. Because we have to just learn to be in Him. Right. You, know, you can tell me something all day long, but if you're not living it, it's not going to have a lot of power in my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So we've got to learn how to be. We've got to learn how to be love. We've got to learn how to be forgiveness. We've got to learn how to be just totally allow the glory of God to show and shine in our life. And then yes. in doing so, you can walk and down the so street and be doing be. something. It is yes. so easy to be because God said... That he formed you to be. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back after this to talk to you more about the call of God. Call the number on your screen, and we'll be seeing you. You are not created to be ordinary, but extraordinary. You are not created to be common, but uncommon. You are not created to be average, but above average. You are not created to be tolerable or passable. No, but you are created to be remarkable, noteworthy, impressive, striking, outstanding, brilliant, excellent, superb, praiseworthy. We could go on and on about how awesome you are. The Julie Tussie Show and the Grace Girls and Company podcast are outreaches of The Voice Incorporated, a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. If you would like to give an offering, you can do it several different ways. First, you can go to Venmo and look for The Voice INC. Again, that's Venmo, The Voice INC. You can also give with your credit card or your PayPal account at TussieOnline.com. TussieOnline.com. Look for the Donate button. If you'd like to become a monthly VIP Voice Impact Partner with our ministry, please reach out to me at JulieTussie at Gmail. Again, that's JulieTussie at Gmail. Remember, all gifts are tax deductible. Hey, if you'd like me to come and share with your women's group or your church meeting or set up a concert in your area, give me a holler. I'd love to come. You can reach me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. And we're back. I hope you're enjoying the music. I'm writing an eighth CD right now to be released in 2020. What, what? So excited about that. That's also a big part of the Grace Girl thing. And then um, I've got all of the music that you hear and some you're not hearing right over on Amazon. So just go search Julie Tussie or Gary and Julie Tussie and get some of this music because, oh my gosh, it's going to bless your socks off. Back. So we're here today. Uh, talking about the call of God, and it's been really rich so far, yes, hasn't it? Yeah. I'm really enjoying this. I'm yes. so glad that you're here with us. This is our guest, Reverend Sharon Webb, and I am Julie Tussie, married to Pastor Gary Tussie. <laughs> Every once in a while, he'll stick me behind the camera, although he knows it's dangerous. <laughs> you never know what I'm going to say, but I love Jesus with all my heart, and I love you, and I'm so glad that you're watching, and I say it all the time. I don't think you're watching by accident, but by divine or ordination of the Holy Ghost. So Amen. keep your Bibles open and let's get into the word a little bit more. We were talking about Isaiah 49, mm -hmm. 1 through 5, talking about how the Lord has called us from our mother's womb, how he's called us to be his servants, yes. and how we simply just have to realize that God has a plan for our lives and God wants to use us. Amen. Amen. And he wants to use us in the ministry of reconciliation. Um, I want to read another scripture in 2 Timothy, and it's 2 Timothy 1, 8, and 9. 
And it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I want to read 9 again because that is so good. It says, Uh, who has saved us and called us. God has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose Mm -hmm. and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I I love that. I love that scripture because it takes the pressure off of us. Right. You know, it's not what we can do and how much we can do, but it's the fact that God formed you, made you, molded you, and gave you a specific purpose in life mm-hmm. according to his grace. And he did it way back when. You know, it says before mm-hmm. the world began. So, I mean, that we could go a lot of different ways. And my mind's kind of going tilt tilt because <laughs> I have this opinion about people who are in secular uh-huh. entertainment and things and how I feel like that God probably has a call on their life. Oh, yes. I mean, I'll have to search the scriptures out, but I believe that when God creates us, he's going to go ahead and give us everything that we need mm-hmm. to function in that. And whether we serve him or not, that call is always there in our lives. You know, if he did it before right. the world began, God knew what he was doing. And I believe that there are people out there that, number one, have never been born again. And don't know that the gifts and talents they're functioning in and the things that they have, whether it's the ability to run a major corporation or go into acting or, you know, or sing or whatever your gifts and talents are or your ability to talk and sell anybody anything and sell Eskimos, Eskimo pie in the middle of Alaska. (laughs) You know, these gifts are from God. So I believe that whether you're that kind of a person who's never known God, I believe that whether you are a, a person who has actually walked in the call of God and have laid it down, and we'll get into that because I'm really going to hit on that. <laughs> uh, no matter if, if you're a new baby in Christ and you just have never heard before that God has a purpose for your life, I believe that everybody, it, that the call of God fits every person, that yeah. every single person created has a call in their life. Now, that doesn't mean we're all called to be Benny Hinn, Rod Parsley, mm-hmm. or even preachers or ministers behind the pulpit. But we are all called to be servants of God. And as a servant, then, let our light so shine that other people are drawn to us. Amen. So I love that how it said that God has called us. He, He saved us and called us with a holy calling. I mean, it's sacred. It's sanctified. It's holy. Not according to our works. Not according to what we do. But according to his own purpose. You know, I like that about God. That God... I mean, he's pretty slick. And how many times have we said, Lord, are you sure you know what you're doing? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know. God, who, me? (laughs) You know. I think a lot of people today, I know of people that I truly believe are not walking with the Lord today because they know. Mm -hmm. They really know. They they have that inclination down within them. You know, and a lot of people say, oh, well, you don't know what your calling is or if you have a special gift or whatever. You don't know until after you're born again. I disagree with that. I do, too. Because if we're born with it, if if it's placed within us in our mother's womb, uh, God, we, you know... God is our Father. He's a very intelligent man, Mm -hmm. and we inherit that intelligence. We inherit that ability to be able to be sensitive and to intuitive and to know what's going on within us. And Mm. I I think a lot of people are are afraid, and they want to run from that call. And the but you know is, why they're afraid, Miss Sharon, is because they're afraid they're not going to be able to do it. And I can, can, I can relate it. to that. And they can't do it. Because I, I mean, I shared a little bit, but I had such a tremendous fear of man. I remember as a mm-hmm. child watching people doing concerts. Mm-hmm. And I would say, because I could sing really young. I could mm-hmm. sing. And I would watch people do concerts. But in my little heart, I mean, we're talking mm-hmm. seven, eight years old, I would say, well, I'm going to sing when I grow up, but I am not doing concerts. Now, how <laughs> silly is that? But see, that was the fear. Mm-hmm. I was afraid of what people would think, and I was afraid that I would not be able to do what what I had in my heart to do, that I would not be good enough at it. And see, and that's where God's really had to work in my life. I always say, it's a miracle. It's a miracle for me to be behind this camera today. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started college, and the first day I went, one of my classes said, 
we are going to sit here and we're going to do commercials in front of a video camera. And I never went back to college again. Never. Not to that. I said, <laughs> I cannot get behind a video camera. So see, people, I think it's a, a lot of times a fear. But we're reading scriptures today that tell us that God, God knows what he's doing. Right. Yes, God he is not going to make you a singer or uh, you know, a singer and not give you the ability to sing. God is not going to make you uh, an evangelist and not give you favor with people and make you so that you have an ability to communicate. God is not going to call you to run a company and not give you the brain to operate in the capacity of a CEO. I mean, God's not going to make you a sous chef <laughs> and you hate to cook. God right. is, you know what I'm saying? And so... <laughs> there you go. A lot of people, um, and I know that I was that same way. And you do you get you get all frustrated because you're thinking, okay, I have this. How do I know that this is from God? How do I know mm. that what my calling is? And one of the things that it has taken many years to understand mm. it is. What is it that you desire to do? Mm -hmm. You know, wh what are your thoughts on? What is it that you would be thinking? Oh, I would love to do that, or yes. oh man, I just have such a desire to do that. And you almost find yourself when you're among friends. Uh, if it's to sing, you're always wanting to get a bunch together to sing, exactly. or you know, if it's to preach or teach, you find yourself when you're with those people. That's exactly what you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. And I know a scripture that I think is one of your favorites, and it has <laughs> really, really become mine because it's that scripture that gave me a better understanding of how we know our calling and even how we know the direction and will of God. And it's the scripture that says that it's God mm -hmm. that gives us to will yes, I and that. to do yes. of his good pleasure. Yeah. So once we really give our lives to God and we settle it, you know, there's the big thing. It's just making up my mind. I'm really going to go with God. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I, I really am. I'm tired of a life of sin and I, I want to walk with God and I'm going to go with God. And when we settle it to go with God, then just rest in that. Yes. Just yes. don't go out looking and thinking, oh, you know, I, oh, I've got to find something to do. I've got to well, find something to do. Well, it's not according to it. our works, right? No. Uh -uh. And then that's where we get all frustrated is because we start trying. You said a while ago, work it they up. think they can't do it. They can't do it. Right. You can't do this. I can't do this. But it's God in us, yes. empowering us, and strengthening us. It's, it's the Spirit of God that speaks to us, through us. Exactly. You know, that we're able to do these things. And you're not only able... When, when you really get in where you know you're supposed to be, it is a joy. Yes. It, you're fulfilled. Yes. You know, how, how would you like feel it. if you had to lay that down for a while? Mm. You know, there's not the fulfillment leaves. Yes. Your life yes. just isn't fulfilled. Yes. And I have had times in my mm -hmm. life where I purposely laid down the call. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a terrible way to live. <laughs> and maybe some of you watching are living that way today. I want you to call that number on the screen and let us get in touch with you because, you know, we care about you. And, and Pastor Gary and I, and I know you too, we don't come on and preach like, oh, we've got it way over you and we know so much more than you do. I'm telling you, I'm here today talking about the call of God because I have been there. I mm -hmm. have walked in mm -hmm. it and I have laid it down and I have had to pick it back up. And so... I, we we just care about you. We don't feel like we have anything more than you other than that God has put us here in front of you today to encourage you that God has a call in your life. You know, I know, I know by the Spirit of God that God has specific people that are watching this program. Yes. God is so wonderful that way. I mean, I can feel the Holy Ghost all over mm -hmm. me right now while I'm talking. You, you that's watching today. God is talking to you today. That call that you've laid down, God wants you to pick it back up. That person that has just given your heart to Jesus, he wants you to know that, that, that you are called of him and that, that God has something for you to do with your life. It's not just getting saved, but that God, he created you and formed you to use you in this hour. I'm telling you what, it's time. It's yeah. time that we rise up and get our act together and start. I mean, I had to shake it off myself. I mean, I went through some personal things in my life, and, uh, you know, I don't want to go into details, but it caused me to give up my heart. And, I mean, I said to the Lord, this is it. 
God, I have done this since I was 17, and this is what I get. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was angry, and I said, that's it. I'm never, I'm never singing again. I mean, you would not believe the things I did. I threw, I had a humongous Rolex from traveling over the years <laughs> in the trash. I mean, I absolutely put a latch on my mouth, and I told the Lord, I am not singing again. Now, can you imagine that? Now, who was the prophet said, you know, that he had to speak forth the word of God of because it was shut up in his mouth. You know, it was, it was, he yes. was on fire. It was shut up in his yes, mouth. exactly. And that's and, what happened. I mean, I went for a couple of years, and I just felt like I couldn't even watch people preach on TV. I was just so hurt. And I knew if I let God just have an inch. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew as a child, I knew the call of God. I didn't understand. Right. But when I gave my heart to the Lord, all of a sudden, all these desires and dreams that I had had my whole life made sense. It was like a huge puzzle that just came together. And I realized that I was not called, and this is another whole topic, but that I was not called to entertainment. Right. But that I was called to the ministry and the the office of a psalmist, if you will, mm-hmm. and that God wanted to move prophetically. God wanted to give me songs, wanted me to go out and minister. And that's what's awesome about the ministry that we have is it's it's unique. And right. now that there's not a place for people to be in entertainment that are born again and spirit filled. Mm-hmm. And but anyway, I actually just set it all down. And after a couple of years, I realized that this scripture that God had actually caused me to cut my teeth on was going to come to pass and never change, that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Yes. And I realized that. And you know, through all that, no matter how many hundreds of people left me, that Jesus never, ever left me, that that it, deep in my heart I knew that he loved me, he was talking to me, and that no matter what I felt like I did or did not do, what other people thought I did and did not do or did not do, mm-hmm that God was not going to change his mind about right. the course that he had set for my life. Mm-hmm. Now, it took me two years to get there. And so finally, I remember, I mean, my heart was, I mean, I was hurt. And my heart wasn't exactly, it needed intensive care. <laughs> I needed to be in ICU, you know. But uh, I finally prayed, and this was my prayer to God. And I, I'm not ashamed to admit it, but, I mean, it's pretty bad. I, so I know where you are. I know where you are. I prayed to God, and I said, okay, God, since this is the way it's going to be, please give me a desire to have that back. And that brings us to that scripture, God both wills. Uh-huh. Say that again. I need to memorize that. <laughs> it is he who both wills and to do yes is the pleasure and see i realized that god's will never changed and his do in my life never changed my will changed i i made that conscious decision that's it i am not doing this god i'm sorry i love you but i'm not doing this and so my will changed so i asked the lord to give me that will and that desire back Yes. You know, and I love that. I love that so much about God. And it's been, a, it took about three years. I guess I so slowly started feeling that in me again. And, and I'm still working. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But the call of God never left. And hopefully mm-hmm. we cannot discount the anointing oh, no. never left. Uh-huh. And that's a wonderful subject to get into. But if you're watching today and you maybe have laid down your call, I want you to pick it back up because Jesus Christ has not let go of you. And the call of God is without repentance. Romans eleven twenty nine. You need to read that. And you know what? Here at the Voice of the Redeemed and Dominion Christian Center, we have a place for you. I don't care who's rejected you. And I don't care what you have done. I do not care. And God does not care because he's not going to change his mind about the call that he's placed in your life. He's not going to change his mind whatsoever. Yeah. God, there's a scripture that says, Arise, shine, mm-hmm. for the glory of the Lord has risen up on you. Mm-hmm. And uh, many people today think, Who am I? You know, who am I that God can use me and, and what, how is it that I can be used? But God speaks to us and says, Arise, yes. shine. And allow the glory of the Lord to shine through you. Amen. And Amen. He will shine. Yes, He will. He and will you shine. know, it's it's a word for everyone that's watching today. God is going to rise and shine on you. We're going to take a break right now, and when we get back, Miss Sharon's going to read a scripture to us. And I hope I haven't. Been- <laughs> 
Oh, I'm enjoying it. Right I know. I'm enjoying this. this. Okay, I'm enjoying this. this. Anyway, we love you. We want you to pick up your phone and call that number. Our email is on the screen and our address. So if you don't have your computer hooked up or whatever and you can write to us or call us, let us know that you're watching and let us have a direct avenue into your life because mm. God is only beginning with what he wants to do yes. for you. We'll be right back. that you're with us today and we are so excited about what we are sharing yes. i am so if you will intense about this this has like been my entire thrust <laughs> for ministry and i just love what the word of god has done in my life and in many many other people's lives you know we were talking just a second ago that when you get on the subject of the call of god it's inexhaustible. I mean, yes. uh, my mind is going a million miles an hour, miles, miles, <laughs> <laughs> an hour. See, I've been in Kentucky too long, honey. <laughs> and I, I mean, you can just take it in every direction, but I kind of wanted to give you a little time because I realize my heart is so full of this mm -hmm. and this has been my life that I can actually kind of monopolize this whole thing. And I know that the Lord wanted us to do this together. So I believe that you had a scripture and that's going to take us more into the purpose. You know, we said that God, of his own purpose and grace, mm -hmm. called us. Amen. Yes. Not of our works, but... Right. Um, yes, I do. And, and I do want to say this, too. I feel that, and of course, this is the... This is uh, my church. This mm -hmm. is where I home church. <laughs> yes, this is my home church. We claim her. When, uh, <laughs> when I'm not out, God doesn't have me on the field. This is my home church. And I do want to encourage you... If uh, if maybe I, I feel that there's people out there today that you know that you have a calling of God on your life. Mm -hmm. You've even walked in that calling for a while, and uh, and then again, there's some that have drugged your feet, mm -hmm. and uh, you've not really gone on out and really really sought God to be all that you can be in the vocation that He's called you to. Um, Dominion Christian Center is an encourager. 
Yeah, they, uh, Pastor Gary and Julie are encouragers, and I think that if I've seen anything in their spirit, it's that they are not here to uplift themselves, not even to uplift this ministry, but they are here to uplift and build you up. Mm-hmm. They are here to encourage you and tell you it's not too late. Amen. You know, it, you've not waited too long. It's never too late as long as there's breath in your body. Mm-hmm. And God wants to use you, and He Amen. wants to encourage you to... Uh, just get up and shake yourself and get out here. You say, well, I don't know the scriptures that well. Get out to Dominion Christian Center, and I'm telling you, God will fill you up with so many Christians, <laughs> with so many uh, uh, scriptures and so much of his word during the Bible encounter on Tuesday yes. nights that you will walk out of here feeling prepared, more prepared every time you leave these uh, Bible encounters on Tuesday night. Mm, mm. And uh, I wasn't told to say that, but that's just come up in my spirit that you need to know this is in a, a ministry of encouragement. Amen. And maybe you've been in uh, other churches or in other congregations and you've not been encouraged to walk in your ministry. Mm. I was listening to a tape the other day, um, Sister Julie, and I, I, I actually I had another scripture to read, but this one, if you don't mind, this one's you go been, for it. been standing out <laughs> to me here. Uh, if you have your Bibles, read it with me. Galatians 1, 15 through 17. And uh, Paul is speaking, and he says, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me Mm -hmm. that I might preach him among the heathen, listen to this, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither (laughs) went I up to Jerusalem to them who were apostles there before me. Paul said, when the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and assured me and I knew what my call in life was, I didn't go around asking everybody, is this my call? Oh, that's good. I didn't even confer, it says with flesh, and you go into strongs, and and when you look that flesh up, that means with any other human being, or even with your own flesh. Mm. You know, we we can carnally reason right out of us the call of God or whatever it is that God's instructing us to do. We can can reason that right out of us. Well, why would God do this? Why would God use me? You know, why would God tell me to go here, to go there? But Paul said, I didn't confer with the flesh of any other or with my own flesh. And he says, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. Mm. He didn't go to, and what do we say about our, our, our kinsmen? You know, oh, well, they're, you know, well, they're our own blood. You know, they're our blood relatives. Mm-hmm. He didn't go to his family and get their permission and say, do you think that God has called me to this? And I was listening to a type of minister the other day, and a, a renowned evangelist, and it was tremendous. It was wonderful. And he said one thing that has happened is there are there are people that are called of God. They have that supernatural anointing and empowering in their life that are sitting on church pews today frustrated Mm -hmm. and they don't even feel comfortable they feel out of place they feel like a man without a country Mm -hmm. because they're feeling something staring within them and maybe even they've gotten brave enough to go up and to ask someone or to say i really believe god is is calling me into this area and or asking permission you know, mm. oh, uh, do I have your permission, pastor? Or do I have the permission of the elders of the church? Or do you all recognize this mm. call? Right. It doesn't matter. I mean, yes, there is a training, and I'm not teaching rebellion here. I don't mean that. Yes. But what I'm trying to say is underlying, you are the one that has to know. Yes. You are the one that has to know the call that is in your life, that God has placed upon your life. Other, Yes, once again, the main call, is that you're called to be his child. Yes. You're called yes. out, out of the life of sin and death unto life eternal. You know, mm-hmm. that's one that's even one of the gifts that this is yeah. even referring to in Romans is the gift of eternal life mm-hmm. with Christ. That's irrevo- that call for that is irrevocable. Yes. Now we can walk away from it, but God is not he's not going to leave us with any excuse. The same way God's not going to put something in you and not let you know what that is. Exactly. And when he does it, uh, I remember one time God would give me a word. A lot of times in dreams, God would speak to me through dreams, or I'd just be in my prayer time, and the Holy Spirit would say, you know, go get a pen and sit down and write. And I would, and then it would just pour, just mm. pour on that page. And many times I'd have to say, you know, Holy Spirit, slow down. I can't yes. write that fast. Yes. 
And then after I, I knew it was of God, because I, I didn't even have to stop to think. It was coming so fast that I couldn't write it down. And I knew that this was coming from God. And the first thing I'd do is I'd go take it somewhere and ask somebody to read it and tell me what they thought of it. <laughs> Well, God didn't give it to them, so they're not going to have the excitement right. about it. God didn't place the call that he's put on your life on mm. somebody else, so they're not going to be that excited about it for you. So you have to be established. You yes. have to know, and God will let you know what yes. your calling and your walk is in life, and then in that you will be established and you will be strong. And yes, there is a time of training and a time of learning. That is to be continual. Paul, after he recognized this, he went off for three years by himself. Hmm. Now, today you do that, somebody would say that you've totally backslid. But, <laughs> you know, I think a lot more of us need to pull aside to ourselves and get with God for a little yeah. while and let God yeah. speak to us. But Paul says, when you know... When you know that God has spoken to you, you know, nobody can tell you that the call on your life isn't who or what you are. Right. But it's very possible that in an earlier walk, an earlier place in your Christian experience, had you gotten around people that didn't encourage you yes. and didn't help you, they could have maybe talked you right out of it and said, oh, you just want to be up in front of people or, you right. know. Right. And, but no, you know. And mm-hmm. then God begins to use when the heart's humble once again, he will say, rise, shine, yes. for the glory of the Lord is risen up on you. And that's when, that's what this ministry here is all about, is to, and I, I don't, I feel that so strong within mm-hmm. me today. Yes. I had no intention of saying this, and they didn't know <laughs> I was going to say this. But I want to encourage you, that is what this ministry is yes. all about. Yes, You're out there, you have a call in your life, you know you do. You're sitting, keeping a pew warm. And you're not being you're not being trained. You're not being encouraged to walk in the call that you're in life. There's a lot of women out there. Yeah. You're sitting under <laughs> ministries that they don't accept that. Um, well, I'm not saying leave the ministry or, but I'm saying add something to it. Get somewhere. If not here, get somewhere where you will be encouraged mm-hmm. to walk in the calling that God has placed on your life. Yes. You know, I believe that there are marriages that are breaking up today. Miss Julie, marriages are breaking up because the women are frustrated Mm. because they're not feeling fulfilled and they're thinking it's the marriage or the husband that isn't fulfilling them, but it's because they're not walking in the calling Mm. that God has placed upon their life. They're not using the giftings that God has placed upon their life and they've got that fire shut up in their bones and they're unhappy, they're discontent, and they're blaming their husband. Mm. Same way with a lot of men. You know, the wife, it's all her fault. But it's just because they aren't walking in the will of God that God has placed them in. And so Paul says, you know, you don't have to go around getting everybody's approval. You know, just listen to God. Know what God wants. Know where God wants you. And if you can't come here, please be sure to tune in every Tuesday night. And you will be encouraged that it is not too late for you. You've not waited too long. I don't. You say, well, I'm, you know, I'm... Uh, 40, I'm 50, I'm 60. Was it Frances Hunter? You know, Frances and, and uh, her husband, uh, She's uh, God has used her in a tremendous uh, healing ministry and written many, many books. And I remember thinking, wow, you know, Lord, if only I had a really began to walk in the call that you placed on my life. You know, back in my teens or mm-hmm. early 20s, you know, maybe you could have used me like this. And then I sit down and pick up one of her books and read it. And the woman wasn't even born again until she was yeah. 50 years old. Yeah. But then she determined, I'm going to let God use me, and I'm going to give him something to work with. So she yes. opens up her Bible, and she lives in it. Mm. She lives exactly. in it for about, I think she said, over 2,000 hours the first year that she was born again. <laughs> That's eight hours a day yes. that she stayed in the Scriptures, in the Word of God, and in prayer. Now, if you want to, God will use you. If you want to allow him, he will use us. Definitely. But there is something there is something for us to do. That's you know, right. You know, God, God's not going to just do everything for us, and, and we don't want to put that across either. There is something for you to do. We do have a part in it. Yes. Yes, and, and I want to pick up a little bit what, because we're going to have to wrap up here in mm-hmm. about three minutes. I want to pick up and talk to those of you that feel the Spirit of God pricking your heart right now because, uh, and I haven't really shared this too much, but I have known in my spirit and in prayer I have seen in my spirit that there are those of you watching that God has ordained that you come and be part of this ministry. 
And, you know, we were talking earlier that in the old days, maybe the preacher did everything. But nowadays, and I believe it's always been this way, that, that we're just here. Pastor Gary and I say this all the time. We are builders yes. of men mm-hmm. and women of God. Yes, we amen. Our call in life is to develop you into that that God has called you yes. to be. And uh, uh, I'm thinking of something that I could say, and I won't say it about that but we are pastors that love people and you know what you can have the greatest call on your life and it will not intimidate pastor gary and That's i right. you can be the next uh, humongous uh, recording artist that god promotes and it will not intimidate me and it will not affect the fact that i know god has a call in your life and i will help god develop that in you and i know pastor gary's the same way and that's another whole issue we could go but i by the spirit of god i know that there are those of you who are watching today and god wants you to come it's time that you put down those things that are hindering you and come and you know i guess i better go ahead and say it and i don't mean it like god's going to proselyte people but there are people who are in churches that God is going to cause you to move to another ministry because God does things in our lives yes, in phases I'm in seasons mm-hmm. you know and so um, there are people and they've even come up and talked to me and said now listen I'm not thinking about leaving my church but and then out of their mouth will come but I know God sometimes will have you hook up with a ministry mm-hmm. if that's you begin to seek the Lord and God will do it and he will do it right if you're sitting there and you're not attending church and you feel the Holy Ghost tugging on you, I want you to call that number, and I want you to hook up, and I want you to put off those things that have held you back, lay down the weight that so easily besets you, just like I had to do. I had to come to myself and rise up and realize God's not going to change his mind, and until I get in line with what God's doing, I am not going to be happy. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I am saying that there's a place here in Lexington, Kentucky, where there are people who will love you. People who will see what God has called you to do. You know when Jordan and Jillian get in their cowboy outfits, I can see what they want to do. (laughs) They want to play cowboys. It's that simple. You can see the gifts and callings on people's lives. Calling (laughs) on people's lives. So I want you to call that number and get in touch with us. And if God is stirring in you to come to church, you better get up and obey. Amen. You better obey Amen. God because you're the only one that's going to go without if you don't. And God has so much for you. We love you. And every time you watch this program, we're going to give you something. So right now I want to tell you about a tape that we're offering. It's called The Prayer of Faith. This tape is a powerful message. I believe that the telecasts that are airing right before this airs are about The Prayer of Faith. Call that number, give us your name, telephone number, and your address. We'll get in touch with you. We'll get this into your hands. This will revolutionize your life. Amen. Call and get that, the prayer of faith. Let us know that you're watching today and you want it. I want to say thank you so much for your time today. It's been so good to have you. We're going to continue.
Until next week, this is Julie Tussie telling you I love you and so does Jesus. You are listening to the Grace Girls and Company podcast, where dreams really do come true. You are not created to be ordinary, but extraordinary. You are not created to be common, but uncommon. You are not created to be average, but above average. You are not created to be tolerable or passable. No, but you are created to be remarkable, noteworthy, impressive, striking, outstanding, brilliant, excellent, superb, praiseworthy. We could go on and on about how awesome you are. If you'd like to support this ministry and this podcast, go to the com right now, my sister, and become a VIP, a voice impact partner with me on a mission from God to reach women with the gospel of Jesus. And thank you so much for your kind consideration. And remember, all gifts are tax deductible. Hey, if you'd like me to come and share with your women's group or your church meeting or set up a concert in your area, give me a holler. I'd love to come. You can reach me at the Julie Tussie Show at gmail.com. I want to take a minute to say thank you so much to our supporters, underwriters, sponsors, those of you that give to our nonprofit corporation, The Voice Incorporated. Visit the com. Lots of fabulous shopping, beautiful things that you might want to get as a gift or for yourself. You can also reach out to me and communicate with me there. The com.